Alright, hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Super Wild Card Weekend Discussion. In today's episode, we got the three games from the Sunday Slate of Action. And, uh, yeah, there, there might be quite a bit to talk about, so we're gonna go ahead and get right into the action. Starting with the Bills, who survive an upset, but, um... Considering that they're playing the Bengals next week, they might want to clean up that imbalanced offense. So Josh Allen on the ground would add would have had four carries for 20 yards. So he didn't play a perfect game, uh, but it's hard to find him at fault for either of his interceptions. Although you would like to not see those. Uh, the first interception came on a deep throw to John Brown, and it appeared that Brown eased up on his route, which allowed Zayvon Howard to track it for the interception. Cole Beasley would then be hit while attempting to uh, catch a pass and the ball would deflect into the defender's hand for the second pick. Uh, the fumble, however, was on Allen and uh, that resulted in a scoop and score for Miami. So truth be told, Miami had no business bringing this game down to the wire, but Buffalo's offense was able to carry its weight save for the fumble six. Allen and company will look to play a cleaner game in the divisional round next week against the Bengals. And I think that's going to be very important for them. They have to kind of clean up these turnovers uh, because Cincinnati it certainly is a team that could capitalize on those turnovers. Uh, Dolphins. Well, I think one thing they learned from the season is that they're going to need a reliable backup quarterback with Tua, uh, even though you have Tua in their future plans. So, the seventh round rookie, uh, Skylar Thompson, uh, was the one who started this game for the Dolphins, and he certainly impressed them in training camp and during the preseason. Uh, though he would ultimately open the year as the third string quarterback, he wouldn't stay. Um, inactive for long as both Tua and Teddy Bridgewater would go down with injuries throughout the year. Thompson made his debut in week 5, playing all but one snap of a blowout loss to the Jets. He suffered an injury of his own a week later, but would resurface towards the end of the season, making his, uh, making his final regular season start in week 18. Oh, getting revenge on the Jets of a low scoring win, so congrats on that. Uh, Thompson finished the year with 534 yards passing, one touchdown and three interceptions, completing 57.1% of his passes at 5.1 yards per throw. So Bridgewater is an impending free agent, uh, so Thompson, well, he might find himself in the backup role with, uh, next year, but as I talked about, right, needing a reliable backup plan, given to his injury history, he's expected to return in 2023 and play quarterback for the Dolphins, uh, they, they might, yeah, they might. Uh, they could look for a better backup option after seeing Thompson struggle through his limited reps as a rookie, but yeah, I would substitute could for need. I think they need to look and look. No disrespect to Skyler Thompson. Thought he, you know, he did about as well as he could, but it was evident that, um, you know, Miami just, even though the game was close, that was mainly due to their defense taking advantage of Buffalo Bill, uh, you know, causing the Bills offense to make some mistakes. Other than that, though, I don't know if, you know, the defense hadn't stepped up the way they would have, this game would have been as close as it was. And, you know, maybe Skylar Thompson could, you know, amount to a solid backup quarterback, possibly even a starter. I have no idea how realistic that is for him. But I think ultimately Miami might want to look at upgrading that backup quarterback position. Uh, Giants. Daniel Jones raises his market value uh, with a sensational playoff debut. So he was a frequent rusher both on design runs and as a scrambler. His 78 yards on the ground would lead the team, although Saquon Barkley would score the rushing touchdowns. However, Jones did uh, throw a couple of passing touchdowns, uh, hitting Isaiah Hodgins and Daniel Bellinger for those scores. Uh, with this win, Jones will now travel to Philadelphia to face the Eagles. The last time that Jones played the Eagles uh, was earlier in the season. I can't remember exactly what week, but it was in, was it in New York? Yeah, it was in New York. Philadelphia came in and absolutely blew out the Giants. Um, and then in the rematch in week 18 in Philadelphia, Davis Webb's won, Davis Webb was the one starting, Daniel Jones resting. And well, Davis Webb man managed to hang with the Eagles, and he showed well as a rusher. So perhaps Jones will use his legs again frequently against an Eagles defense that has been vulnerable on the ground all season. Um, will the end result be different? Probably, maybe. It's possible. I think it might be a closer game than it was last time around. But I guess we'll have to see how that one goes. But either way, that price tag on Daniel Jones did go up. He played himself a game. No turnovers either. So it was a pretty clean game. 
uh, Vikings. Well, uh, their defense needs a reboot in the offseason. So Cousins, uh, looking at the offense, Kirk Cousins didn't throw an interception and avoided any disaster mista disastrous mistakes in the Vikings playoff loss. He also rushed in a touchdown on that QB sneak. Uh, however, on a must convert 4 for 8 late in the fourth quarter, he threw well short of well short of the sticks to a cover TJ Hawkinson. It was an overly conservative decision that handed the Giants the victory. Uh, still, Cousins had himself a solid season. He was 4,547 regular season passing yards for his most since 2016. He's still in their contract for 2023 and most likely will be returning as a Viking starter. But I suppose there's always a possibility that he is floated as a possible trade candidate. Unlikely, but it's a possibility. As impressive as the Vikings 13-4 record was this season, their negative point differential hints that they could be much less effective at pulling off close wins next season unless they reboot that defense. Now, I don't know if that means firing the defensive coordinator. I don't advocate for people to get fired, um, but I, I think it's certainly an interesting decision for Kevin O'Connell, and I think ultimately this decides whether he has a long-term future or a short-term future. You know, as a head coach, as the CEO, you got to set the standard for you know performance for your uh, your coordinators and your fellow co and your other coaches as well too they're you know they're on your staff so i guess you know kevin mcconnell's got to decide if okay you know if ed donatello uh with how he played with how he coached below uh you know what, what kevin mcconnell's got to set the standard and then he's got to decide if ed donatello um met that standard uh, which I don't think he did and then what is the consequence for not meeting the standard is it a firing is it not a firing um that way I think the Vikings you know should be should be looking to make some additions to the defense secondary d-line um you know I think if they can improve on defense they, they might be able to improve on this year maybe not from a record standpoint but certainly you know, maybe get out of those one score games or maybe not find themselves <laughs> needing to make fourth quarter comebacks because the defense couldn't get any stops. Guess we'll have to see. Uh, and then moving on to the last game, uh, Bengals. So their Super Bowl hopes um, hinge on the shoddy offensive line. So I guess Bengals fans, they're tired of hearing this story, but it popped up in an ugly way in this game. I think all but two of their <laughs> Yeah, basically they are they are hurting on the offensive line. I think one of their starters went down in this game, so they are putting themselves in an interesting position um, going up against Buffalo next week. Um, the box score for the game against the Ravens is a bit misleading, misleading for uh, Cincinnati's quarterback, largely due to the minimal number of offensive plays and the bit the Bengals were afforded. Baltimore would win the time of possession battle inflamed by an 80-yard drive that ended with a 98-yard uh, fumble return for a touchdown from the Bengals, which would then give the ball right back to the Ravens in the second half. The Bengals only had four possessions in the second half, three of which would combine for only 20 yards. Still, the Bengals attempted 32 passes to just 18 rushing attempts, five of which came from the quarterback Joe Burrow. One of those resulted in a touchdown <coughs> on a sneak, meaning that this offense will continue to operate as pass heavy uh, in favor of the rush, which, you know, again, offensive line being the question mark, you know, if, if that's how you want to approach things going forward, then yes, their Super Bowl hopes are going to hinge on that shoddy offensive line. <coughs> and next up is another difficult test in the Buffalo Bills. As for the Ravens, well, they are going to enter a franchise decide defining offseason after an injured Lamar Jackson missed the playoffs. So Tyler Huntley would start his first playoff game for the Ravens in his third NFL season. Uh, yeah, Lamar Jackson having missed the final five weeks of the regular season in addition to the wild card game. Huntley started four regular season games and the playoff loss, amassing 884. Um, <coughs> yards, four touchdowns, and four receptions across six appearances for the Ravens. Lamar Jackson enters the offseason as an unrestricted free agent, but it appears that Huntley is not ready to, not yet ready to assume command of an NFL franchise based on his play over the previous two seasons, meaning that for the Ravens, if they want to move on from Lamar Jackson, Tyler Huntley is not the answer. So then what does that mean? Well, I think certainly the franchise tag is definitely in play. I think it is likely that Lamar Jackson gets played, gets tagged, but doesn't get tagged and traded. There is an interesting question right there. And 
Ultimately, I think, look, Rokon Smith represented himself, and he got paid from the Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson could get paid from the Ravens, but I think what's preventing him from getting paid is Lamar Jackson himself. He is the only person who's preventing himself from getting paid, paid, and ultimately, I feel like if you're the Ravens, set a deadline say like hey we need to come to an agreement by this day or else we're going to work out a trade we're going to send you elsewhere and you know send them to a team like the colts for example they have the number four overall pick send them to the colts get the number four overall pick then take a quarterback with that pick very easy thing to do right there um and i truth be told i don't think lamar jackson's worth multiple first round picks so I don't think Baltimore should try to get multiple first round picks. Just get one trade up of a team in the top five. That can say that's certainly looking for a quarterback. I mentioned the Colts because they're an easy one. You could also do the same thing with the Texans at number two. That's a possibility. Either way, I you know hope yeah, I think it would be easier if the Ravens could work out a deal, but then as I said, you know, the Ravens you know, if it, if it weren't for them, they would have had a deal done by now, but Lamar Jackson's kind of preventing things from happening. So hopefully both sides can work out a deal, and then Baltimore can just uh, spend the rest of the offseason with what money they have left um, and using their draft capital to try to build up that alt roster around Lamar Jackson. Because I think even if Lamar Jackson was playing in this game, I don't know if the Ravens would have won this game, just for the fact of the matter that they... That it doesn't matter if it's Jackson or Huntley under center. When there's no weapons, nobody's going to do well in that offense. So, um, even if they do trade Lamar Jackson, you still got to find a way to build up this offense. Still got to get some weapons. Can't just depend on Rashard Bateman and then Mark Andrews. You're going to need other guys in there to help step up. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what Baltimore does. And with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of NFL Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.